Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Yes. Give AV a minute. Good evening, everyone. We've got a level yet. Thanks. Uh, welcome to this evening's planning subcommittee meeting. Um, I'm Councillor Sarah Williams. I chair this committee. Also here we have a vi uh, vice chair. Hello, I'm Councillor Sheila Peacock, Councillor for Northumberland Park, Vice Chair of Planning. Councillor Barbara Blake, Seven Sisters Ward. Councillor Yvonne Say, Browns Green Ward. That's it. That's it. Oh, is it on? Yeah. Sorry, Councillor Amina Ibrahim, um, Noel Park Ward. Councillor Adamu, don't forget, just press your button first, please. Councillor Adamu, say it can you say it again? Oh, I do apologise. <laughs> Councillor Gina Adamu, like Adam, with all your event, Haringey Gold, with different spelling than Haringey Borough. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Councillor Dijan Basu, Seven Sisters Ward. Councillor Reg Rice, Thornton Hill. Councillor Viv Ross, Fortis Green Ward. Councillor Liz Morris, Highgate Ward. Councillor Luke Wally Harrison, Crouch End. Thanks. We also have officers present with us. Rob Shasovsky, Assistant Director for Planning, Building Standards and Sustainability. Robbie McNocker, Head of Development Management. Uh, Philip Elliott, Principal Planning Officer. Justin Farley, James Dorr, Legal Planning Officer. Officer. Justin Farley, Legal Officer. James Dorr, Planning Officer. Fiona Ray, Acting Committee's Manager, Clerk to the Committee. I think that's um, Richard Truscott, design officer. Elisabetta Tonazzi, conservation officer. Suzanne Kimmon, climate change officer. Okay, thank you. Other officers um, will introduce themselves as needed um, throughout the meeting. Just to say this meeting is being recorded. Um, all registered speakers should be aware that they will be recorded for live or subsequent broadcast via the council's internet site or by anyone attending the meeting. Members and speakers are requested to note the information set out at item two on the agenda, the planning protocol. I've received uh, apologies from Councillor Peter Mitchell and Councillor Barbara Blake is here as a substitute. Um, there are no items of urgent business. There is a late appendix and late information for the meeting under section 100B4B of the Local Government Act 1972. I'm of the opinion that these should be considered at the meeting as a matter of urgency by reason of special circumstances. These circumstances are so that the additional information can be considered by the planning subcommittee at its meeting today. Does anyone want to have any declarations of interest? Thanks, Councillor Peacock. Um, I do not consider that I have any interest to, to declare, but given the current correspondence received, I would like to place on record that I will be considering the planning decisions before me at this meeting with an open mind. Thank you, Councillor Peacock. Um, Councillor Ibrahim. Cool. So, uh, um, myself as well, I do not consider that I have any interest to declare, but given the current correspondence received, I would like to place on record that I will be considering the planning decision before me at the meeting with an open mind. Um, also, um, although this is not a declaration of interest, I place it on record considering one of the objectors is Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, that I'm an Arsenal season ticket holder and a member of IESA, which is the Arsenal Independent Supporters Association. Shame on you, Guna. Um, so um, they will continue on to item seven, which is um, HGY 2021-3175 High Road West, found at page 1 to 402. Um, our main, this main item 
however, um, has received several very late objections, including um, as late as yesterday evening, as can be found in the addendum today. So I'm going to ask um, Mr. Robert Shuskowski, Assistant Director of Planning, Building Standards and Sustainability, to explain a little more about that. Thank you, Chair. The Council has obtained legal advice regarding the recently received objections. Officers have been advised that there is a need to ensure the Council addresses the points raised in these objections and that the committee has time to give proper consideration to those points and to officer advice before taking its decision regarding this agenda item. And it is an important principle that objections received by the Council are given proper consideration as part of the decision making process to ensure fairness, which is not possible with the late objections referred to. So the officer recommendation is amended from what is in the report from recommending granting planning permission to a deferment of the decision. Thank you, Chair. So, um, uh, members of the public and um, planning committee and applicant team and all the objectors, I think um, with apologies, because I know a lot of hard work has gone into this and it's a very large document and I know you've spent a long time reading it and understanding it. Um, but because of these exceptional circumstances, I'd like to propose to defer consider consideration of this item until planning subcommittee meeting in June 2022, so that the committee can give proper consideration to this late new information and offer us advice before making a decision. Do I have a seconder? Uh, I'll second that, Chair. Okay. So if we could take a vote now on my motion. Yes, Councillor Corley Harrison. What, what information has been provided that we're deferring based on? What is the severity of the objections provided? It's the lateness and the, the volume and lateness. Um, I think over to Mr. Shusovsky. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Um, the, the legal advice that's been given is, is to make absolutely sure that committee has the time and ability to consider the representations which we received last night. Um, and um, we consider it's not appropriate to do that, um, to do the um, to do the um, the report full justice today, um, given the time um, that committee will need to um, to consider the late objections and for, for you to be able to hear officer advice that has fully been able to address um, those late objections. So we we are keen to reduce the risk of any potential um, challenge, um, and that is the that is the legal advice. And that is our officer advice um, to recommend uh, deferment um, because of the lateness of the objections and the ability of the committee to be able to um, to uh, consider those in full. Thank you. Councillor Colley Harrison. I'm concerned that this could set a precedent where anyone that opposes an objection uh, or objects to an application puts in representations the evening before the committee then going forward has to follow pattern and defer in further meetings yeah i i totally get that point and um i've not moved this motion to defer lightly i think it is exceptional um and given qc advice that's why i'm moving that motion and which has been seconded um so if there's no other uh, comments. I think uh, I'd like to go to the vote on that. So all those in favour of the motion to defer, please show now. All those against and those abstaining. Thank you. So that passes with 902. So again, apologies to 
everyone who's apologies to everyone who's um, come this evening for that item. We'll just have a two minute break to let people um, leave or stay and move around. We're just continuing to pause for another couple of minutes while we're set up for those people watching online.
Okay, are we good to go, everybody? I think we should start the next item. So we move on to item nine on the agenda. Um, it's pre-planning application on um, Tangmere and Northolt Block, Stapleford North Block, Enterprise Centre, Medical Centre, former Moselle School and surrounding public realm areas on the Broadwater Farm Estate um, in Tottenham. Um, pages 403 to 430 in your packs. I will hand over to the planning officer to introduce. Thank you, Chair. So um, this pre-application proposal is for the redevelopment of part of the Broadwater Farm Estate, including demolition of existing buildings in the erection of buildings of up to nine storeys in height to provide 294 new homes, improvements to the public realm, replacement of new commercial and community space, new landscaping and play space, and an urban design framework for the wider estate. The estate was first occupied in the 1970s and includes close to um, 1,100 homes. It is located within the southern part of the, the SA61 site allocation, which is identified for housing, design and urban connectivity improvements. The Moselle River runs in a culvert underneath the site. The estate is not located with, within or adjacent to a conservation area, nor are there any listed or locally listed buildings within or adjacent to it. The application site currently includes the Tangmere and Northolt blocks for which demolition is urgently required due to their significant structural issues. It also includes the former Moselle School, which was recently demolished, Stapleford North Block, and the existing Enterprise Medical and Energy Centre facilities. All new homes will be council rent properties. All homes will meet the latest internal and amenity space standards and will be dual aspect dwellings. 35% of the homes would have three or more bedrooms. The development will be zero carbon, will be designed to connect to a future district energy network. The development will be supported by an urban design framework, producing consultation with residents, which would provide a guide for future development of the estate, including block refurbishments and additional public realm improvement projects. 85% of respondents to a recent ballot of eligible residents on the estate support the development proposals. Officers are generally supportive of the scale, bulk and massing of the development, its overall layout, affordable housing provision and housing mix, residential quality, sustainability and parking provision. The provision of a new diagonal route through the site and, and the improved pedestrian environment are other positive aspects of the proposals. Members feedback is being sought at this stage to inform the submission of a detailed planning application before the end of March 2022. So I will now hand over to the developers representatives who will present the proposals and who will be able to answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks. If you'd like to introduce yourself as you come in. Thanks. Oh. Just need to sort out the Wi-Fi. Sorry. We appear to be having some technical issues.
Great, thanks. Hi, so I'm Abigail Batchelor. I'm an Associate Director at Karakuta Carson Architects. Um, I'm going to talk through the proposals for um, Broadwater Farm Estate, new homes and the supporting urban design framework this evening. So the scope of the project is um, based on the fact that following um, technical surveys of two of the buildings on the estate in 2018, um, it was recommended that two of them needed to be demolished um, due to the cost of repairing the structural issues. Um, so in consultation with the residents, that, that decision was made in 2018. Um, so we were brought on board to replace those council homes um, and also to look at um, the broader context of those homes and to try to improve the associated public realm um, and to re-provide some of the non-residential spaces, including the Enterprise Centre that sits on Willen Road, just opposite the bus stop, for those of you that know the estate. Um, so also part of our brief was extensive um, resident engagement and obviously looking at trying to create the most sustainable project for Broadwater Farm possible. So this is just an overview of the community engagement process that we've been through to date. As you've already heard from the planning officer, last week um, the ballot closed and there was a 55% turnout of eligible voters, 85% um, voting in favour of the proposals. So that was um, following almost two years of quite intensive engagement with residents, not without its challenges due to COVID. Um, but we worked with the Regen team to really try as many different um, methods to reach residents as possible. So some of those are listed here, um, issuing, posting booklets and surveys out to residents um, with free post um, return envelopes for surveys, um, pinning up um, information in lobbies of housing blocks, um, online meetings, council offices knocked on considerable number of doors. I think they tried to knock on everybody's doors at least twice. We had some public meetings outside. You can see some of the images there. Um, also community days. And we had also a community design group that was set up and we met 13 times. And you can see, probably can't read on the screen, but at each of those 13 meetings, we had a different theme. And so it was really about learning from the residents and trying to use their understanding of the estate as it stands um, to understand it better, but also to understand what their priorities and needs were. So this is the summary of the proposals that we're putting forward. So as we set out originally, there's three key sites. The first one is the former Moselle school site. So the educational use of that school has already been reprovided in the new school building on Adams Road. So it's currently a vacant site. The building was demolished um, late last year. So the idea is to provide new council homes on that derelict site um, and to provide a really positive entrance to the estate. At the moment, there's a school car park that sits on that main road, which is a really key road. We'll come on to why it's really important in a little bit. So there's 40 new homes on that site. Then there's the triangular site at the centre of your the image there, which is the North Holt site. Um, this currently has a 19-storey um, tower block on it. Um, that's being reprovided. We're reprovided fewer homes that are currently on there, but as already been pointed out, we're providing more family homes. So it's 100 homes, but with um, around 30% um, family homes in that block. And then the final one in the south there, you can see that we're reprovided the Tangmere block um, with this large open courtyard block with a stepping roof line um, and a series of terraced townhouses to tie into the surrounding urban fabric which sit on the currently um, a park site, an open space site, which is known as the Memorial Gardens, which in consultation with residents has been moved to the heart of the estate and is provided as a new community park in the centre of the estate, which is that triangular space opposite the, um, the North Holt site. So this is the conclusion of the, um, the residents were the work that we did with residents. They set up a series of priorities for their estate and for the new homes. And you can see in the green text there that sets out sort of the, the broad water vision that we developed with those different um, resident groups. What we learned were their four key priorities were about improving the ground floor. So all of the estate buildings at the moment are raised up on, um, on stilts, on Pilotti, and it's dominated by car parking. 
So one thing that residents were really keen on was to make the space and it feel safer, and that was about bringing activity to the ground floors. Part of that was also to improve the quality of the streets. So originally the estate was designed for pedestrians to move around at first floor level. And what we've been trying to do through this project is really bring that activity back to the streets to try to make them feel safer and to provide pavements, because currently there aren't pavements. There's space for cars, but not necessarily for pedestrians. So that connects to the welcoming and inclusive open spaces. Um, there are some wonderful open green spaces on the estate, but they're underused and they don't feel very safe because they're surrounded by these um, ground floor car parks. So that was something that was really important. And obviously the quality of homes was key to residents, not just the existing, um, not just the new homes, but the existing homes as well. So these were key things and were the four drivers of the, the design process for the new homes. So as was already mentioned, the estate sits within a wider planning um, development area allocation plan. So while we don't have a master plan for the project, we do have an urban design framework which stretches up to Lordship Lane um, and out to Higham Road and the southern edge of the site. Um, so as part of this planning submission for the new homes, there's also a broader strategic um, approach to the development of future improvements and um, a document which steers future investment. There's an existing um, estate improvements plan. And the idea is that this gives a spatial framework for any future investment, which ensures that the, the new homes fit in with a broader, the broader ambitions of the community and the planning policy. So this touches on the, one of the key first issues is to try to create more activity on the streets of Broadwater. And we've done that through creating a clearer street layout. So trying to create new streets which have homes on both sides with ground floor, front doors um, and residential entrances as far as possible. So this has been a key issue. I mean, along with that, there's the provision of perpendicular parking spaces rather than, um, sorry, parallel parking spaces rather than perpendicular parking spaces. So trying to reduce the impact of parking and cars on the estate and really making sure that we give back space, firstly pedestrians, also to safe cycling routes, but as well as to green the estate. So providing more street trees and sustainable urban drainage. So this is just an idea of the section and some of the good examples of sustainable urban drainage that have been delivered elsewhere in the borough recently. We have the, um, the bus um, stop in the centre of the estate. At the moment, that's a one-way bus route. The new street design future proves the two-way bus route through the centre of the estate. So along with those improved streets, we have the improved open spaces. Um, you can see the triangular park in the centre that's been designed with um, feedback from residents, things that, that they would like to see. As I said, there's a lot of green space, but it's not very well used. So the idea is that green space at the heart, that triangle, has um, play space with a theme of um, water as well. The diagonal route is created um, partly due to the route of the Moselle River that runs from the, um, from the west along Woolen Road and then shoots diagonally across the estate up to the Moselle site. So what we're doing by changing the layout of those buildings is also future-proofing the naturalisation of that if that was to be something that wanted to be taken forward is um, a main river and that is something that we have considered um, and investigated as part of this design process. But the, the other priorities are providing um, the open courtyard in the Tangmere block um, so we're looking to provide the appropriate levels of play space as per the GLA guidance. Um, but also in discussion with residents, they were very keen that new residents shouldn't have privatised um, communal spaces that weren't accessible to existing residents, that the ethos of this open ground floor should be maintained through the estate. That's also been discussed with the uh, Designing Act Crime Officers. And the agreement is that the strategy going forward is to have um, that open during the day and then closed at night. So this just gives you a little bit more detail on the layout of the park, um, the integration of the water features and play space in that park. And then that cycle route that runs diagonally connecting um, Willen Road bus stop up to Adams Road um, to a new shop and school street. It's also activated by um, different ground floor uses. So there's a reprovision of the Enterprise Centre, which is an existing, um, existing uses. They've been placed on the corners in a similar way to corner shops to activate those civic spaces. 
and also the reprovision of the medical centre, which currently sits next to the bus stop on Willen, on Willen Road, is being reprovided in the first phase in the Tangmere block, and then the site, which is currently underutilised with a um, single-storey med medical centre, is being used to provide around 30 new um, council homes. That gives you a diagram of the wellbeing hub. So it's a combination of the medical centre and the connected communities um, provision that's already um, delivered on the estate. And you can see how that activates the um, Willen Road with other ground floor non-resi uses and the bus stop at the heart with the civic space. So this gives you an idea of the scale. You can see from the model as well. Um, residents were very um, were clearly opposed to more high-rise development. They didn't want to live in a tower block. So um, that led the this strategy where we maintained a datum around the seven-storey height, which is similar to which is the height of the existing taller blocks that run east-west. We also continued some of the spirit of the Tangmere block by having the stepping roof line, which also helps to mediate behind between the surrounding terrace streets breaking down the sense of difference between the estate and the surrounding streets through the scale of the buildings and also through the materiality introducing brick and concrete um, to try to create a hybrid of the architectural language of the surrounding terrace streets and the estate itself. So there you can see how the brick and the concrete are combined in the architecture to try to create this kind of dialogue between the surrounding terraces and the estate itself. One of the key things in the brief is to provide family homes. So it's 35% um, three bed plus homes on in the new homes in the proposal. Um, these are found in terraced houses around the edge of the site. Also as maze nets on the ground floor, providing those active frontages along the residential streets. We also have upper floor flats. So those the stepping roof um, line gives us an opportunity to have triple aspect. Um, family homes with really generous roof terraces. So we've been careful to consider where the family homes sit and to make sure they've got um, good daylighting and good outdoor spaces, private outdoor space. That's just one of those examples of those upper level flats. And you can see um, a view of some of the internal spaces there as well on the screen. So this is, these are the last few slides, just running through the before and after views. So this is the approach from the south from Gloucester Road. You can see the um, a very recognisable waterfall sculpture on the left. So there you see the Tangmere block um, in that, and the memorial garden in the front. So you, that will be replaced by the line of terrace houses you see on the right-hand image and the stepping block of the new plot of Tangmere. This is the current Tangmere courtyard. So again, surrounded by these raised um, decks and the car parking. So the idea is that this is this diagonal route through and the, um, this generous diagonal route through to the new building at the civic space at the heart of the site, you can see on the right. This is a view from a kitchen window um, when one of those townhouses on the Memorial Gardens, looking up the new street with what you see is residential front doors and windows overlooking both sides of the street to create well overlooked public space, reduce the impact of cars with trees and sustainable urban drainage. And then that slightly taller building, which is nine storeys, um, sitting on that civic space as a marker. And then this is the view of Willem Road. So on the right hand side now you can see the current condition with the Enterprise Centre blocking the pavement. Um, and you can see there's no pavements at all actually. Um, so the idea is to move the line of the building back to give a little bit of relief to provide pavements, space for that two-way bus route, cycles, and that clear route through to, um, to the Lordship Wreck at the end of that um, view that you can see there. And you can see that the, um, the heights of the buildings relate to the existing context, trying to tie in with that datum, but also some of the architectural features. So there's an um, expressive gable that you can see that end elevation of that building relating back to the architectural language of the, um, the estate buildings themselves with these nice drying room um, elevations that they have, really trying to pick up on some of the positives of the existing architecture. And then this is the view, you can see the North Holt Tower on the left, and this is the view of the entrance to the new community park from Adams Road. So with the Enterprise Centre reprovided on the left to activate the civic space, this clear route linking down to that Tangmere block um, trying to make it easier to navigate your way around the estate and to make it feel a little bit more like a normal London street, not dominated by the, the raised decks and the parking garages. And here's the Adams Road route. So the really important route coming in from the east, 
that leads you into the recreation ground with a lovely view of Alexandra Palace at the end. So the idea is to move that building line back, open up the views of the school, which is just behind there, um, and provide a similar scale building um, to the buildings opposite um, with the shop on the ground floor. So that was something the residents were very clean to have was the um, affordable food shops on the estate. I'm afraid that's your time. That's it. That's the last slide. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Councillor Corley Harrison first. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> Quite like the design, I have to say. Unusual for me to say that. Particularly on um, is it Willen Road, I think the slide that you put up there with the architectural detailing on um, the building that was on the right of the picture. Um, but um, it seems like from the drawings anyway, or from the CGIs, there's been some loss of green in terms of lawn, maybe for more permeable, hard standing. For example, the triangular park or described as a park looks to be, you know, a lot of hard standing. Um, and it's already quite a concrete jungle in there. So I'm just wondering how that isn't adding to that further somewhat. Um, and um, it's part of a site allocation. So I was just wondering, perhaps in more detail, what are the plans for the bits outside of this red line, so to speak, uh, and whether there is intention for other bits to come forwards, particularly as just at the end there you talked about, or the slide talked about, I'm not sure, um, making the estate more like London, you know, regular London streets rather than an isolated estate. That would obviously take other parts of it changing somewhat for that to happen. So whether there are um, plans and it's developed with that in mind. Thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the query about the green space, there's no net loss of open space within the project. The design of the park has developed. It's got more green in it than it previously did because residents made the same comment that you have. So there is um, a desire to make sure that's green. There's a lot of trees there as well. So I think part of the idea is to um, increase tree planting through street trees, but also in that park to have it as a sort of um, to have a canopy of trees in that space. Um, also, I feel there's a lot of green space which people look onto, but it isn't well utilised. And the park's designed to be flexible and used for lots of different activities. Um, so that's also one of the things is that we worked through with the residents. They wanted space to exercise, to play, also for older children to play, to sit and reflect. Also for performance, the youth group were really clean to have that. So I think there is a lot of green space. It isn't very well used at the moment. And I think the park's designed to try to enable residents to carry out a wider variety of activities and to be robust and versatile in that way but i think your point is fair and one that we've heard from residents as well so maybe that needs to be developed in a little bit more um a bit more detail in terms of what's happening outside the red line that's captured in the um urban design framework there's um there are proposals to refurbish the existing housing stock there's no proposals for further demolition um and that includes um, new ground floor entrances, bin and bike stores, um, so improvements to the to the ground floor character of those blocks because there's structural reinforcement that needs to be done on the upper levels as well. So there's a package of work that will come forward um, in the not too distant future to start a pilot project for the refurbishment of those buildings as well. Councillor Rice. Thank you. In 1985, a riot occurred on Broadwater Farm, resulting in the death of a police officer. In the aftermath of those disturbances, a great deal was hung around the neck of the design and layout of the accommodation, the buildings, all these stairs and walkways that were present at the time. So bearing that in mind, can you say what advice have you taken from the police crime prevention uh, section to make sure that this will not happen again on Broadwater Farm and that your design and arrangement of the buildings and walkways and parkways and everything else is suitably allocated and will not encourage crime but rather defer it?
Would Rich, um, our desi design officer, do you want to come in on that? The question is about um, post-1985 riots and that the, the design of the estate was somewhat criticised. What is being done in this to it? Yes, sorry, I didn't uh, hear the question the first time. Thanks for repeating. Um, yeah, um, I mean, what was changed since the since since the 1985 since 1985 was all the um, all the all the upper level links between the blocks were removed. Um, so originally, when it was originally built, you could go from one block to another at upper level. Um, those were all removed, and they created new entrance areas for each block at ground level. Um, I mean, they did some various, uh, you know, they did the murals and things like that as well, um, and quite a bit of landscaping, and a few of the infill buildings like the health centre. Thank you. And just, 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 just a second, this is, this is designing crime. Uh, just a second, Councillor Rice, we're just coming to that. Thank you, Chair. Um, and just to add to what Richard said, from a planning authority view, we always make sure we're looking at things like secure by design, working with the Metropolitan Police Secure by Design Officer so that mistakes that may have been made in the past in terms of um, design and walkways and all the all the issues we know associated with those um, are, are improved in, in the in the designs you see in front of you. So that's something we take quite seriously as, as planning authority and we have planning policies to back that up. Thank you. And Councillor Peacock would... Well, out of all of the people present here, I'm the only one that knows Broadwater Farm from the first inception, from the first brick that was laid, because it, all, everything that was there on the farm came past my house, and I saw everything being built, and for 18 months I heard the constant thump, thump, thump when they were piling for the two tower blocks. I did all my shopping over there. It was actually a wonderful place to go to. Tangmere provided everything that I needed from the laundrette to the fish and chip shop to the doctor's surgery to the everything. I didn't have to come down onto the ground floor. And the only reason that they got rid of all of that was because youths decided there's a good place to throw down um, heavy beer barrels down onto people down below. Okay. And that's the reason they got rid of the walkways. Up to then, it was a great success. And, uh, you know, the shops were all thriving, doing very, very well. Great. Winston Silcott had the, uh, the red, green vegetable shop there. Do you remember Winston Silcott? He was supposed to be uh, the one that killed PC Blacklock. Okay, okay. But thanks. It, it was a very interesting time. Yeah. And uh, the people there uh, thrived. We had a community centre and it, it was extraordinarily wonderful, but it all failed in 1985. Okay. And I could give you the past history of that as well. Thanks, Councillor Peacock. That's really helpful. Um, do, are there any more questions? Yes, Councillor Adamo. Ah, um, I was just wondering, um, it says in the paper 35% of the homes will be three bedrooms or more. I was just wondering whether there is a chance to increase that. The reason I'm asking this is that like most councillors, we get, I get so many people, in, even in, in my ward, for instance, I, I have some difficult cases at the moment where you have families with three children in one bedroom flat and it's overcrowded. And um, I'm sure every one of us um, sitting here had the case work like that. Is it possible to have uh, more um, housing for families? three bedrooms, instead of 35%, let's say 40% or 50%. Thank you. Thanks. Who wants to come in on that? Chris, are you going to come in on? 35%. Um, so I think as part of the design process we tried to maximize those family homes and to ensure the quality of those family homes so I think what we heard from residents is they didn't want to live as families in high-rise buildings so it was trying to balance out the density and the number of homes that we were providing and the quality of those family homes so I think we're confident that the way the family homes have been designed here are appropriate for larger families and have good outdoor space good access to daylight um, and as many as possible are lower down in the buildings residents were really keen that they didn't want families living higher up 
Um, so I think from a design perspective, given the number of homes we were trying to um, deliver on the on the site and this feedback from residents, they didn't want to live in high rises. Um, this is part of the sort of design iteration, the design process that led us to this this proportion of family homes. Yes, of course. I, I don't mean to be difficult. It's just that um, when you have a family with three children in one bedroom plan, one has autism, the other one has some, uh, you know, a lot of uh, medical problems, and and they all sleep with the mother in one bed, and and the father sleeps in the sofa. I think this is serious matters, and I I get a lot of case work similar to the have one case now. In fact, I was in tears. I was so upset about that case. And um, you, I know, I don't know if it's too late, uh, this request, but uh, I, will I will ask you to consider the new developments to look at the f uh, uh, accommodation that is suitable for families, if I may. Thank you. Yeah, just, just a quick point on that. Um, I think in the existing estate, it's around 13% family housing. So this is a significant increase on, on what the current position is. So proportionally, there will be more, a lot more family housing um, in this particular development than there is across the estate. Any other questions from the committee? Yeah, Councillor Blake and then Councillor Corley Harrison. Um, in paragraph 721, you talk about the nationally described space standards. Um, I remember when we moved into our council flat, it was the Parker Morris standards, which I think was abolished during the, yeah, yeah. Um, so how do they differ? Um, because I've looked around some existing uh, properties and they seem, they do seem very small to me, which is presumably when the Parker Morris standards were abolished. Um, so can you just explain a bit more about the nationally described space standards? I mean, you know, what, how will that, how will that, how, what will that be, please? Thank you. Richard. Yes, uh, thank you, Councillor Blake. Um, the nationally described space standards were introduced three or four years ago, I think. Um, they are similar to the Parker Morris standards, but slightly better. They're particularly good on storage space. Um, they, they, they provide minimums, quite generous amounts of minimum storage space, uh, floor to ceiling heights, um, generous size of living rooms, and generous size of overall flat sizes. So they're generally just similar, but some, in some places better than Parker Morris. So they are much better than what has been built between Parker Morris being abolished in the 80s and the NDDS uh, a few couple of years ago, although London had started to go ahead of the rest of the country, because in London we had the, um, the Mayor's Housing Design Guide from um, about um, 2007 or 8. So. Thanks. Councillor Corley Harris. Thanks, yeah. I'm just um, interested who will be offered the homes in the first instance, who's getting priority, because presumably. Um, you know, some residents that have been decanted in the last few years may choose to may choose to remain in the homes that they've been decanted to if that's been offered. But um, whether other people on the estate may be offered them or um, or not. Uh, and then what you're doing for kind of sort of cohesion between those that are in their existing homes on the estate have to live through the building works and then see other people come in and move into the brand new homes whilst perhaps they haven't had their upgrades yet or, or anything like that. So um, two questions, I suppose. So, yeah, Sarah, can you find a mic microphone? Would you mind just introducing yourself as well, please? Thanks. Hi, um, I'm Sarah Lovell, Head of Area Regeneration for North Tottenham. 
Um, so the new homes on the Board Farm Estate will be allocated under the New Homes Move scheme. Um, so the uh, that scheme prioritises uh, residents from the Tangmere and North Alt blocks that had to move off of the state. Um, so they will absolutely get the first priority for the homes. Um, and then after uh, they have been allocated, um, should any wish to return, um, which we think is unlikely actually, there's that a lot of the, the families are very settled in their new homes. Um, so uh, after uh, th th they're prioritised, it then goes to um, existing secure council tenants within 250 um, metres of the estate. Um, so that means that the residents on the Broadwater to farm estate will benefit um, from those 35% larger family homes that we're providing. Um, so, so it will be kind of existing residents and then it will look at um, neighbouring wards. Um, should we finish on Councillor Coley Harrison, and then I'll come to you, Councillor Blake? Yeah, it was just the, the second half of the question was about how you kind of kind of bring those that are staying in older blocks together with those that are moving into the new blocks. I suppose the cohesion element. In terms of um, when you say uh, those, sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Sorry. Um, so you'll have people that are living in existing blocks on the Broadwater Farm Estate yeah. next to a building site for however many years. Then brand new people will move into those new homes that they've seen go up. There may possibly be some level of, you know, oh, they're getting that and, I, you know, I'm not or for whatever reason. How are you going to make it back to one community rather than there's all the people in the new blocks and there's all the people in the old blocks, if you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. I, I think um, one of the things we'll be looking to do through the wider Broadwater Farm Estate Improvement Programme, because um, this piece of work, the new homes uh, for Broadwater Farm Estate, is just one element of a wider Broadwater Farm Estate Improvement Programme, where we're seeking to improve the quality of life for residents on the estate. Um, so we have uh, a socioeconomic uh, regeneration programme, um, an extensive engagement programme. Residents um, are highly engaged, the most engaged they've been in many, many years on the estate now. Um, so we're going to continue that high level of engagement to work with the community um, and we'll be working with the key stakeholders we, that we've now identified um, to look at ways that we can bring the community back together um, and, and keep them, um, I, I guess, engaged uh, with us and the wider community over the next few years. Thanks. Councillor Blake. Um, well, just following on from those questions. Um, so. Is the aim that every child will, as far as possible, have their own bedroom? Because I know there's been significant overcrowding, as there is across this, this borough. Um, and I know on the Woodbury Down Estate that they have an agreement that every child has their own bedroom. And also, priority, if you've lived on the estate and your, your, children, your kids grow up, do they get priority... Uh, you know, if they want to get get a flat or a, a, a studio on the estate. Do we have an agreement about that? Um, so, um, in terms of um, uh, every child getting a bedroom, um, we, we don't go quite as far as that, but what we are saying is it's as per the allocation policy in terms of the number of bedrooms uh, that families are allowed. Um, what we are seeking to do as part of the new homes move scheme is prioritise those residents that are under-occupying and overcrowded um, as uh, kind of the, the first residents that would move to the new homes. They will pri be prioritised against others because we we know we need to tackle overcrowding on that estate. So absolutely the families on the existing estate who are overcrowded will absolutely be prioritised for the new homes. Um, in terms of um, the second element of your question, um, can you just repeat that again? Sorry, just the... Um, well, I know there are some developments and I'm thinking of the Woodbury Down, but also I think the one in near London Bridge led better where... You, you've grown up on the estate, your, your, your kids, um, you know, want to stay within that, that neighbourhood and they actually get priority. S Yes, yeah, so that's something that um, we have discussed with the community. Unfortunately, the New Home Smooth scheme doesn't allow for residents to split households. 
um, because there is such an extensive list of residents that are currently on, on the housing register. So unfortunately, the new Homes Move scheme doesn't allow us to, to say that um, we will split households and you can both get a new home on the estate. So um, unfortunately not. Any more questions? I'll take the opportunity then to follow up from um, Councillor Collar Harrison mentioned he liked the design um, of this. Um, just when we were also talking about the wider, the outside of the red line areas, what sort of design elements are you designing into the inside of the red um, line so that when it's developed, the refurbishment happens, how can that be picked up? Is that something you're thinking of in the designs for the inside the red line? And my second question is on the area I think we're calling, um, still calling Tangmere, even though it won't be Tangmere, um, and that uh, pedestrian way through or private garden. And I'd just like a bit more information exactly how we see a, that working to be both, to serve both purposes. Yeah, so as part of the planning submission, there's the urban design framework um, that has those, that covers those four topics. Could you lean in a little bit? You're a bit quiet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So there's the four topics in the urban design framework cover the character of streets. So the idea is that the surrounding streets would be um, upgraded to be the same as the ones within the red line. So there'd be consistency in the way the streets are treated to the materials, the trees, the sustainable urban drainage strategy, um, the pavements running through. So the street network would all knit together. Um, similarly, there's the investment in the um, in the park and the civic spaces, and so they address obviously the new buildings and the existing buildings at the same time. And as we were talking about the refurbishment of those ground floors of the existing buildings, the idea is that there will be entrance lobbies off some of those civic spaces, new entrance lobbies, better entrance lobbies, and bin and bike stores for existing residents. So that currently there aren't sufficient bin stores or any bike stores for existing residents. The idea is to repurpose some of them the undercroft areas that are currently car parking spaces to provide those, given that we've had a survey of the car parking and there's an over provision and there's spare spaces to provide those. Um, so I think those are, those are the key things um, in terms of knitting into the wider urban fabric and hopefully that's clear in the urban design framework document. Um, in terms of the quality of that um, southern square, residents are really clear that they don't want this situation of them and us they don't want the new residents to have um, privatised communal space that isn't open to the rest of the estate. And it was really this ethos of this openness of the ground floor that residents wanted to retain. Um, we recognised and discussed in several meetings with the Designing Act Crime officers that that could be an issue um, in the evenings. So the current strategy is that those would be open during the day and closed in the evenings. So currently, that's the that's the strategy. I think there's a clear line that we have this sort of porticos that cross the front there. So you realise that you're crossing a threshold when you go into those spaces. People are supposed to circulate on the street. That's the whole purpose of the design is to try to get more people moving around the streets and to reduce the number of routes through the undercroft and really try to encourage people to use the streets. So it's not a clear route that we're encouraging people to take, but it does and so maybe if you're visiting the estate, it wouldn't be a route you would choose. But if you lived on the estate and your kids have been playing in the playground in your courtyard and wanted to go and play with their friends who lived in the other courtyard, then it would be open to you and you could move through that um, route as an alternative. Any, any more from... No? Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, that's the end of that item. Um, there are no items of urgent business and um, we have a provisional date for the next meeting of June the 6th, 2022. So we'll see who's on a planning committee then. <laughs> Thanks everybody.